Wow, 60 diesels. So today, I'm back on me, um, well, you've all seen me rebuild the cab of this thing. And then um, cut the body off of it because I decided I didn't like that. And now I've decided I don't like the chassis because it's, um, I knew it had a few bits, but to be honest, while I'm here, I'm just going to cut it in half down there and change this bit. Um, as you can see, we've made a start. Didn't video it because it's a bit dull. Fuel tank's out. He sat the floor down here. All the high arm gear is gone. Hand brake mechanisms are disconnected. Prop shaft is off. He's down there. And the cut truck is currently sat on a jack. So what I'm going to do today is chop it off just here. And then I'll take you out. And I've got a lovely one of these that I cut off something else. So I'm going to slide in here sleeve the front of the chassis, replace this, put my new high ab cradle on this over there, and then fit a new body. Obviously all not in one day. Right, I'll go and show you me other chassis. I'll do a quick wander out in the back corner of the yard. I sort of chopped this off some in a while ago. I'll be saving on it. Because um, it sort of looked, it's got a few, it's a bit battered on the back end, but I don't need that bit. Um, but it wasn't rotten. I thought it had been under a loot in all its life. I thought that man might be able to make use of that. So, anyway, it's got high ratio back axle in it. It's got some wheelie leaf springs, we'll have to get rid of them. But the actual, as you'll see, the frame of it is rock on. It's had no patching on the end of here. On either side, I might nick the spring out of it. Nothing there. So, my cunning plan, and then I sort of or just quickly chopped it off there. What I'm going to try and do is get that out of. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll work our way around getting that out of here somehow. I mean, it's relatively clear. So I might have to move the eyes up. I think I'm going to drag that off on a lorry because I tried pulling it around the other day and then had a nasty incident where I slipped over and dropped my bit on myself. What's a good plan? Um, yeah, so you can see where I'm coming. So basically, then I end up, I can sort of do some wax wiping and some sorting, end up with a rock free truck. Yes, admittedly chopping it in half, structurally maybe, but in theory, if I reinforce these shunt rails into the cab, because I've got a high up cradle sat on here, um, plug it, weld it, bolt it, then it's stronger than it is on the join between the cab and the truck where the high up cradle sits. And if it's going to snap in half, it'll do it somewhere back there where it was original. <laughs> As you will have just seen, a few months later, first bit of footage a minute ago, did have a beard, was like April, January, February, March, March, April, never quite got back to it. So, I've just cut this thing in half. Now, the cut you'll have seen me make is not my final cut. I've just acted it off about four inches behind where I want it, um, so that I can trim it up lovely and square and fix the back of the cab. Now, I have dropped that back axle out because we'll keep that out of the way with its hideous great leaf springs which might go back on I haven't decided yet and I'm going to put this bit which is rubbish out there somewhere out the way but find something to do with it and probably throw it in there but it is going to go scrap because it's, it's absolute crap so what I'm going to do next which might be in a couple of days time but will be two seconds for you is go and get the new one or the new to it one that's not rusting out the back, cut off another truck. Plan.
Right, so as you will have just seen, we've sort of got to a point now. This is my new section of chassis. She's all trimmed up and as square as I can get it. Um, when we cut the truck, we cut it slightly long just to get rid of the rotten back section of old chassis. So this is the rubbish bit that I cut off. So this, obviously, we're all square and level. So this is off the back cab of the truck, which was the last piece. And as you can see, it was rubbish. So everything now, that way is good. So what we've got to do is, obviously you can't just butt weld this together because it's not going to work. So I need to reinforce this join. So what I've got, you could have done it in, in box section, but I can't get, I need 150 by 50, sort of reasonably heavy wall, and I can't find it. So what I've decided to do instead, I've got a good friend of mine with one of them big press brake hydraulic thingies to fold me up some heavy duty C section. So... 150, 50, 50, and we're going to sort of about 500 long. So we're going to slide the section into the front of the cab, into this outgoing chassis leg. We're going to plug weld it basically as well. To, so we'll drill holes hit in. We'll have the flat side of the seat, this side. So we'll drill holes all the way in here, in here, and in the bottom to allow us to plug weld the ingoing section cut into the cab, make that nice and strong. And then we're going to do exactly the same going into the chassis here. So he's plug welded. And then once we've, um, we've got the front welded in, we'll slide the back up. So the sections are in the chassis. And then obviously it's 13 foot dead on from here to the back of this chassis once he's, he's here. And then we've obviously got to make sure it's, a, it's level and true and stuff. So it's going to involve a lot of measuring to make sure that we don't get any of that sort of stuff. Then obviously... It's a, a heavy butt weld round these, just extra weld here on all four sides. Rejoin the chassis, grind it up, and then it should be super strong. So we can put that little crane cradle on the back here. Got rid of the rusty, minging, horrible chassis, and we've got a really good one now, admittedly. Completely different vehicle, but that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing this. Um, and I say, if a vehicle's actually stretched, which most of our recovery trucks are, this lots of this was done from, from new um, by bodybuilders. So, uh, so that is now garbage. And um, whilst we're here, obviously, I've got to attend to the last two bits of rust that I couldn't get to before because we had a massive body here. So I'm going to sort that and this and then paint the back of this cab green, match the front of it. And then once I've got it all welded up, I've got to change brake lines and obviously run the truck's wiring loom we have picked off his over a wing mirror on the far side there so what i'm going to do is clean and paint this chassis the same color as the rest of the wagon so she looks proper smart and then lano guard it to death once it's all welded up and, um, and that should keep the old goat nice and well, pucker for the next few years or for another 10 years at least you would hope um, and then after that we're on to cranes cradles and a steel recovery, lightweight steel recovery body. So we may have to chop the end of the chassis off to get that to fit. But anyway, so, right, all I need is me bits of C-section, which I'm just waiting on from the mate of mine. as you'd have seen a minute ago obviously I've got my C channels I am um, I've quickly buzzed them through our mill and knocked I mean 150 50 50 um, I've shaved this one down by about four mil because there's a slight over bulge in the bottom of the chassis here to make sure this fits lovely in there perfect so I've started drilling me holes for me big plug welds so what I'm doing is um Basically, I was a drill a hole with a decent sized metal bit and then we're wallering it out afterwards with a Christmas tree bit. So, um, I'm going to continue. So I need to drill five holes, I reckon, four or five holes in here and then obviously the same on the bottom. And I'm going to clamp these up in here. So clamp this way and a clamp this way to make sure they're dead square. And then we'll clean this and we'll plug weld all of these up and then, um, Obviously, they're going to have to slide a chassis on here. As you'll see, there's loads of room for doing that. Slide the chassis on. 
work out how much overshoot we've got into here. Now that's as far as I can go into there, so that's in just past into the cab, because um, you hit up against a structural member. So I'm happy with that. It'll be stronger than it was originally. So once we've wallowed a load of holes in here, slid it up on there, make sure it's all a level and a flat and stuff, and um, then we can really sink some heat into this join. There will be a gap, so don't worry that this isn't perfectly straight on the cuts because it doesn't matter as long as it measures up all right, everything fits. Um, and then I can always buzz the slide off full of weld, which will make it stronger. So I'm going to get drilling a load of holes now. A load of holes here using a standard drill. Um, that's mainly due to access. And now we are on to mag drilling. Much better things for uh, for reasonably heavy steel work. And let me just plug it back in because then he just got back. Ah, go work. Obviously, it's 110 running off a transformer. So what we've got to do is wall us some hole, more holes in here using the mag drill. So e -e -e. put a couple lower down. So electromagnet basically only comes and it turns on really handy if you make sure that you brush all the metal filings off of the base of it before attaching it. So it turn magnet on, magnetic bonza. So I'm going to put a few more holes in here, no point doing that live, we'll do a little bit more time lapsing and then um, we've got to wallow some more holes in that side and then some holes in the bottom so we might try mag drill jack something to get two in the underside of here and then we'll get jack in and so we've got to blow out and everything slide all this together do some leveling up get some big welding done <laughs> So, as many holes as I could drill, perfect spacings don't really matter because also these are going to be plugged full of weld, ground off. So to be honest, you won't even know they're there. Um, obviously, it's a bit impossible to make the mag drill work upside down, dangling off a non-flat surface on the bottom of it. So I plasmed the holes in there. I'll tidy them up in a minute. And then basically, with a bit of cleaning up, we are um, ready for the big slide. Right, so what I'm going to do first before I attempt any description of sliding together, now obviously these channels are square and true, so I'm going to very quickly let's do it like this basically I'm going to weld the front sections in and clamp them up first because um, we can get in here like this and actually pull them against the side of the truck, I reckon. I'm not going to get everything in the wrong place. Yeah, we're going to want that. Let's have you in first and you in after. Actually, we'd have you in at the bottom, couldn't we? We need a U clamp. So if we basically clamp this to the side here, which we know is flat and square, or to a degree, hopefully, is flat and square, like so. So that's pulled in tight to the inner of this chassis leg with this absolutely rubbish G clamp off hand kicking around the workshop. And then hoik this one. So all in there, look. Done up nice and tight and then pull him in. That's the bottom down out. And we'll plug weld this one first and that puts that piece of steel lined correctly. So we don't end up with a truck with like that. Right, welding.
current. And what we got at current, all of these, hot, 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 welded in, solid. So hopefully, I think they're square. So where I want them to be, I've done the ones underneath. I did go back and do the two underneath around there last. So I need to slide this bit onto this bit. Now this truck is, as far as I can see, sort of propped reasonably level. There's going to be a degree of that measuring stuff that one isn't very good at. So I've got to get that slid on here. We may have to beat on these to knock them about a bit, but we should hopefully, if all goes well, be able to get in here without squashing one's stuff. Pull this this way, slide it on here, slide it up, and then we can go for some top quality measuring. Sounds like a plan stand, doesn't it? So this... Oh, 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 no, that didn't work. Well, I think the arse of this chassis is currently too far over, which it well and truly is. But that's not bad. Right. That bit there needs to go over that way a bit. And the jack needs to go back in see what we can do without dropping it on me foot. The ends are tucked in here and now we are all over the place wobbly 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 wise. We've got a bit of give so what we're going to do is push her up sort of tight and then I think we might call that one this video today's, today's video because me and Fudgy are going to have to get doing some fairly serious measuring and then we're going to come back again, boz all this together clean and sort the rest of this and then we got bodies high abs cradles electrics all sorts of stuff to fit but let's just shove this together see what she looks like well as you'll be able to see that's this back together. Now, I did try just gingerly rolling it together. And the main problem I was having that it is only me here this afternoon. Um, and this bit is wobbling around all over the place. This bit is wobbling around all over the place. I gave that idea up. Um, and I've literally just put, you'll see me, I'll see me use them. There's a ratchet strap either side. And I just literally jollied it up because there is a bit of flex in the, in the top of these. They're not quite wedge jam solid in there. So um, anyway, it's pulled up. It's pulled up tight. If you measure from this point to the back on both sides, it measures, measures 3.65 meters, which is fine. That's what it registered origin or what it measured originally. Um, the center prop shaft mount, which obviously was, would have, well, the one here is off on the new chassis. That's in the center of the bolt holes and he's bolted up quite happy. He's here. Bolts aren't tight, admittedly don't need to be for the minute. So I'm going to have to do a load more welding and a load more measuring because um, obviously we've got to get it level and make sure all of this is flush and true and everything is exactly where I want it. And obviously I just need to check on wheel bases as well to make sure I have got it 110% spot on before I weld it all together. And then it goes down the road sideways if we get it wrong. Right, so that's that all dragged back together again. Um, obviously we've got to do a bit of levelling up, a bit of checking, don't want to weld it all in the wrong place. Um, but that won't be this time. So, uh, can you cut your recovery truck in half, change the chassis, put another one on? Yes, yes you can. Um, who's been out buying things? If I'd just gone and bought something, very 1980s, did that today. I've gone and bought something completely stupid. You'll be impressed. That will probably be next week because I'm going to have to go and get it. Or we might be back on midweek on welding this up. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching our 6D Diesels.